Okay, hello and welcome to part two of databases. What we're going to look at today uh, is how to set up a database using Microsoft Access. Okay, so the learning objectives of today, we're going to have a look at different data types, we're going to be adding descriptions, and we're going to be selecting a suitable field to be using as a primary key. Just to recap what we've been learning, uh, now what we're looking at are the difference between fields and records. Fields are the labels here, for example, name, address, and phone number, date of birth. These are all the fields. These are all the labels that you have in an application form. And now the record uh, are the details that you fill in. One record would be for one person. Okay, so one person will have the name, the address, the phone number, date of birth, their nationality. Now this is one record, the first record. And then the second person would be the second record. So today we're going to be adding our fields from what we've been looking at. Uh, here is the sample that I provided you last time in the previous lesson. So we have a uh, student ID, we have student names, date of birth, gender, address, contact, the date they joined, their height, and any siblings. Okay? And these are different field types and description. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to have a look at Microsoft Access. Look out for this icon, Microsoft Access. When you open it, you're offered a, a selection of uh, different templates you can use. Uh, but today, we're going to start off with a blank desktop database. So click on this option once, and it will give us another option where we can actually give it a file name. And we're going to call this Students Database. Okay, make sure you know where you're saving your documents. Click on create. And now this is the standard user interface. Now what we're going to do, let's save this table first before we start editing. Let's call this, uh, let's say we want these students for year eight. Click on OK. And you can see our table here is for year eight. Now with this user interface, you can see the ribbon up here. We're going to focus at the moment on the design view. So what this is known as at the moment is currently it's in data sheet view. Two ways we can go over to design view. We have the option down here that we can click or we can use this option here to go to design view. And this is where we're going to build our database. The details that we have here, the field name, the field type and the description you will see we have the same here, the field name, the data type, and the description. Whenever you start a new database, it will always start off with an ID as an auto number. Now, we don't always use that. And you can see this icon here, this is where the primary key is. And we just want to delete this row and say yes. Okay, so now we're going to have a look at building this database and the various options that we have here. So if we have a look at the field names, we have data types here. Now for data types, we have a lot of different options. We've got short text, we've got long text, numbers, date and time, currency, uh, auto number, and yes or no, which is a Boolean. Okay, It's also known as logical data because it can only have two values, either true or false, uh, on or off, ones or zeros. Okay, So we're going to start building our database. We have our first field name, student ID, and that's going to be short text, and the description is, is going to be the ID of the student. Next is the student name. Again, it will be short text, and a brief description, name of the student. Okay, next is date of birth. Now this is going to be date and time. Okay, and this is going to be the date of birth of the student. Now, the reason we don't use age in a database is because if someone was to join the school, and say they were 11 years old when they join, so they join and we type in here to the database, they're 11. Now, when they graduate and we have a look at the same record in five or six years, it will still say that they're 11. So we use the date of birth, so at any point in time, we know what their current age is, okay? 
contact number. Okay, now for contact number, a lot of people want to put it in as a number. However, with phone numbers, generally they have spaces in between. They often start with a zero and they have dashes and all sorts of other symbols. Uh, plus, it is not a calculated field. You wouldn't ever use a phone number as a calculated field. So phone numbers, contact numbers, they will always be in as a short text. Okay. Okay, so now we have now we have our information entered in. We can see we have our field names here, student ID, student names, date of birth, the gender, address, contact number, the day they joined, height, and siblings. Okay, and for the date of birth and the date they joined will be the date and time, and the height and siblings are numbers. Now, just to let you know what we can actually do when we click inside this date and time, we have an option down here, which allows us to uh, add different validation rules and we can even format how the date and time will look so you have a lot of different options so while selected on date and time we can select this field here and we can change the format and choose it to how we want it okay the short date uh, next if we click on number you can see we have uh, integers uh, we can have it to decimal places uh, in the format for numbers here got the formats you can see all the different types of formats here as well okay and for short text again we can choose the field size these are this number represents how many characters that that field will have okay so next what we're going to do is we're going to have a look at which one you think should be the primary key field now the specific criteria of a primary key field is that the information in that field has to be unique, which means that it cannot be duplicated or the same. Now, if we have a look at this, can people have the same height? Yes, they can. So that cannot be a primary key field. Okay. People can have the same amount of siblings. Okay. And the most suitable primary key fields would be the student ID. Each student has their own unique ID that is only applicable to them. So to add a primary key field, we right click on the student ID just here and we can see the primary key option. And when we select the primary key, you'll see a key appear on the side. Okay, that means that we've selected it as the primary key field. Okay, so now that we have designed our database, we have our database that looks like this. We have our field names, our data types, and our description. We can now go to the data sheet view and we can start entering in our records. So let's start off with our first student. Student ID BG183. Barry Giles. Date of birth 25th of June. 2003 okay you can adjust the width of these if there's not enough space okay contact number siblings okay so we have our first record we have our student called Barry Giles he has his student ID again this is the primary key field it's his date of birth gender address contact number the date he joins his height and siblings now I'm going to show you what happens with the primary key for the next one if we try to have another student as uh, BG183. When we click to the next one, you can see it comes up with an error message. It says the, cha the changes were not successful because it creates duplicate values in the primary key field. So this is not possible. So what we have to do is we go OK and we have to change it to another one. OK, so let's add our next record in. We have a JW189, let's go for a James Williams. Birthday is 15th of June 2005. Male 25. Audio drive. So what? Okay, telephone number. Okay, and again, 
This is our second record. So now our school has two students in their database. 